What is the difference between a sociopath, a psychopath, and a narcissist? Here to answer this intense question is Dr. Romani. Help us out here. Well, it's, you know, again, there's a lot of overlap, but the fact is a lot of people are using these terms interchangeably. Mm. They and should they be? No, they no. shouldn't. They're okay. different things, okay? One rule of thumb to remember right off the bat, every psychopath is narcissistic, but not every narcissist is psychopathic. Make sense? There, there's, there's your key difference. A narcissist is somebody who lacks empathy, is grandiose, is entitled, is constantly seeking validation, is arrogant. Um, it's a disorder of self-esteem, and they have trouble regulating their self-esteem. But when a narcissist does a bad thing, they feel a fair amount of guilt and shame. More shame than guilt, frankly, because they're concerned about how other people view them. Shame is a public emotion. So they don't like being viewed negatively in the public eye or by other people. That's where the shame comes from. But they'll feel a little bad. Like if they cheat on their wife, oh, I probably shouldn't have done that. Yeah. Psychopaths are a different animal. They're all of those things except no guilt, no shame. Wow. They don't feel remorse when they do something bad. Wow. So they're, they're great um, serial killers. Oh hired assassins, um, people who are going to go in and literally sort of gut a business. These are your guys. They're like, I don't, I don't care who gets hurt. They'd say that and they'd mean it. Okay, where a narcissist is like, I hope no one gets hurt. Okay? The difference between the psychopath and the sociopath is the one where most people get confused because the sociopath is a lot like the psychopath. They do bad things and they don't care. Okay? Here's the key difference. A psychopath is born and a sociopath is made. Mm. Okay, that's the key. So a psychopath, in fact, we know in the research on psychopathy, which has also been called antisocial personality disorder in our diagnostic manual, these are people who are actually believed to have slightly different autonomic nervous systems. Our autonomic nervous system is actually that part that holds our sympathetic nervous system, which is our fight and flight system. So when our autonomic nervous system for a normal person gets charged up, which it would if we broke a rule if we did something embarrassing or rude, if we ran through a red light, our heart starts racing. Mm -hmm. We sweat. Our, our pupils get wide. We look around because we're afraid of the consequence. A psychopath doesn't have that same kind of arousal. That's why they're able to lie on lie detector tests. That's how they get away with it. They don't have that same kind of arousal. So where you or I may go on a roller coaster, feel that sense of excitement, we need to get that arousal in a good way. We don't like feeling it when we do something wrong. They don't feel it. So they do get they get stressed? No, not in the same way. So if they're driving, because mm -hmm. if I'm driving mm -hmm. and I see police sirens coming behind me, I mean, it is a full on, oh, oh yeah. my gosh, I can't believe I'm going to get pulled over. But a psychopath would see that and go, oh, I'm going to get pulled over. Well, this could be. They could have a dead body in the trunk and they wouldn't, they wouldn't change. And so the they pull over, they get the ticket and they don't care. No, they don't care. And they pay the ticket? If, and maybe not, they'll even probably get an attorney to get them off or say, yeah, you know, my understanding of your state laws is you can't really be doing this. And they'll be cool as can be. And this is, this is a, a difference in their makeup. They're actually their how makeup. their nervous systems are wired and their brains are. There's actually been interesting research done with PET scans where you can see brain function. And what not just shown, to clarification, not PET like dogs and cats, PET, PET yeah, scans. Yes. Positron emission tomography scans yes. of the brain, which show brain functioning, if you will. And what they see is that the, the section of the brain that serves empathy, that doesn't naturally light up in them. And you can actually teach them to be empathic for a minute, but it doesn't last. A lot of psychopaths who commit violent crimes end up in jail, and the ones who commit more like white collar crimes, I guess they end up as multi-billionaires <laughs> because they're willing to do really, really rough stuff in their business and get through like a cartel leader or something like that, call for the killings of other people. Now, their interesting um, counterpart are the sociopaths. Psychopaths born, they tend to, their belief is that they may very well have, this might be genetic, in fact, psychopaths often have fathers who have lots of antisocial tendencies. Now, how much of it is learned, how much of it is genetic, it's a little bit harder to suss out. But we do see that there is that difference in your true psychopath. They also tend to be have really glib, shallow charm. They tend to be really intelligent. That's why they get away with stuff. If they were so they've, really they've learned mess. behavior to yeah. assimilate into society. Oh, yeah. But there is, it's all a facade. It's all a facade. They're so charming. So if they're born this way, 
would a three-year-old then not get stressed out if it got no. scared? So uh, that's incredible. So what we see when we diagnose antisocial personality disorder, which is sort of our diagnostic equivalent of being a psychopath, in order to get that diagnosis, you have to have shown a pattern prior to the age of 15 of things like truancy, violence towards other kids, stealing, skipping school. And not felt bad animals, about it. Setting fires. They just do it. They don't care. And that before the age of 15, so it's a long-standing pattern, that's what makes us call them a psychopath or having antisocial personality. Now, this is different than sociopathy. Yes, okay. Sociopathy, they look a lot like the psychopaths. The difference is they were made. So this, some examples here. The kid who grows up in a really, 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 really rough neighborhood and learns criminality to get by or learns to be a bully or like, you know, gets involved with sort of like the wrong kids and uses a lot of muscle because that's survivalism. But they, they it's not necessarily always comfortable for them. They just learn it. It's the person who grows up with a father who teaches them the business and teaches them how to break the rules. Um, they, he may But not, they, like, they don't. They would, would they feel, would they start sweating and have their heart race if they, might, they got pulled over? They might. They may, may not feel so good about it. They'll be a little bit more uncomfortable with it, but in time they learn it. And that, that, what, it's almost like they, they get trained in not being as aroused by it. Listen, if you broke enough rules, if you lived under certain conditions of lawlessness long enough, you'd adjust to that new world order, mm -hmm. if you will. Mm -hmm. That's what the sociopath does. Mm -hmm. And so they're the person, who someone who said he was actually a great kid until he got to high school. And then it seems like he got in with the wrong kids. That feels more like the sociopath. Wow. Okay, that's almost like a training that might happen from at the, in, within the family, within their community, within even the job they get, some cases even within some form of military training. Have you had sociopaths and psychopaths as clients? Mm, not really, no. no. They don't come to, tend to come in for therapy. They, they don't see any benefit to it. The only time you would tend to see psychopaths or sociopaths come into therapy with any consistency is if they were court-ordered. Yep. So I thought you were you know, going to say um, couples therapy. No, God, no. No, no. They, it's because they're court ordered. So the judge will make that a condition of release kind of thing. Or they're within prisons and jails and getting some treatment in there. Th this is so incredibly fascinating to me. If a psychopath goes to jail, he isn't upset about going to jail? Um, it's, in some ways, it becomes a cost of doing business. You know, but it's also, they, no, they're not happy about it. There was, psychopaths and to some degree sociopaths don't think about consequences. That's why they pull really penny ante silly crimes like holding up a liquor store. Basically, I need 150 bucks, here's a liquor store, it's open, let's go get the money kind of thing. So it's like they act first and think later, so they often don't plan in terms of consequences. That's why they have a tendency to lie, cheat, steal, and they tend to have very inconsistent work histories because they, um, they're not able to hold a job. They're yeah, like aliases. Um, it's definitely like it's more of a griftery kind of a space. So we've talked in previous videos about how to cope mm -hmm. while dating a narcissist. Yeah. If you find yourself dating a sociopath or a psychopath, is there any coping or you just got to get out? You're in trouble. You're I mean, in trouble. That could be, actually be a very dangerous It sounds like it. Yeah. In fact, you know, we, and, and to, even with the narcissistic piece, um, I do, uh, I've done research and work in the area of domestic violence or what's also called intimate partner violence. Most people who perpetrate domestic violence are either narcissistic or psychopathic. And so, so there's a danger there. In other words, they will dispose of you if you get in their way. I want to share a story with mm -hmm. you to get your feedback. Mm -hmm. This was told to me by a friend, mm -hmm. and she said in college she dated a guy for a year, mm -hmm. but the guy started to get um, just a little weird, and mm -hmm. they broke up. Uh, for the next year, he courted her mm -hmm. and did everything she wished mm -hmm. he had done the first year. Mm -hmm. Showed up on time, brought her gifts blah, blah, blah. They started dating again. He was perfect for a year. Mm -hmm. He, they went to Thanksgiving at her family's house. He was perfect to her parents, just became the perfect mm -hmm. man for her because right. he knew what she wanted. And after a year on the one year anniversary, he broke up with her and said, I've been playing you this whole time because I wanted to crush your heart. Yep. I, I am not actually mm -hmm. behaving this way, mm -hmm. or uh, this isn't real. Yep. I've been faking it for a year just so I can crush you. Yep. Would that be a That's psych more psychopathic? Psychopath. That's more psychopathic. You know, or sociopathic is more likely. You know, um but if they have no 
empathy, then why would they want to hurt somebody? Um, because because empathy empathy is not empathy is a positive emotion. Okay, wanting to hurt someone is a very antagonistic emotion. Wanting to hurt someone at some level might even give them a little pleasure, power for sure. It's it's interesting to me that someone cannot be empathetic but then want to hurt somebody because to me you would mm -hmm. have to have the empathy in order to even know what no. it's like to hurt somebody. There's a difference between empathy and understanding. Mm. You can understand what because in oh. words, it's like that's why psychopaths that make sense. great salesmen. Because they understand a person. They can read a person and immediately say, I got his vulnerability. I'm going to make him buy a car. God. Psychopaths are great salesmen. God. Salesmen of cars, timeshares, all, all that stuff where they're upselling and almost taking advantage of someone sometimes, making them take on more money and cost of something than they really should. But no, no, no. It's that he was able to be superficially charming. Psychopaths and sociopaths and narcissists make great chameleons. They're <sighs> definitely able to change the situation to get what they want. And psychopaths in particular and sociopaths, are, they, they view the world as an instrument to fulfill their desires. Mm. That's really what they're about, which is what it's awful because they're going to often discard a partner when they don't have much use for them or expect them to be, have a very specific role. So they may have married her and she may have had their kids. Now she's going to have to put up with their affairs because they want something else. And too bad if you don't like it. This is the new world order and I will destroy you in court. It's that kind of thing. That is insane. Yeah, it's chilling. It's I chilling. want to leave it right there. I have learned more about sociopaths and psychopaths than I ever thought possible. Make sure you check out as well our discussion about narcissism with Dr. Ramani. Thanks again for Thanks. being here. For more information on all things mental health, make sure you go to medcircle.com. There you can curate your own list of your preferred mental health topics. It'll be delivered to you exactly when you need it. I'm Kyle Kittleson. Thanks for watching. Kids, welcome to another exciting episode of the original Red Pill Show. 
today is to a wiener to the day. January 20th, 2020. Believe it or not. This show is for entertainment educational purposes only. Please use at your own risk. This show is copyrighted by moi. No part of it can be reused, rebroadcasted in any way, shape, or form without my written consent. You can just ask finally. Show's opinionated. That's why I do it. You're going to hear shit here that you're not going to hear anywhere. That I can promise you. This show's opinionated. Host, especially me, callers, 815-975-3089. Call in, say whatever the fuck you want. I don't care. Uh, People that are naughty in the chat room, guess whatever, are and always will be opinionated. Thank God. Under no circumstances whatsoever should opinions be taken as advice. If you're seeking professional advice, we strongly encourage you to hire a license if required person in his or her field there, little Tommy. Hey, man. No. That's his name. Wake up. It's time to make the donuts and listen to this dumbass show. Broadcasting live from the wonderful town of Loveland, Colorado, and on Freedom Revolution Network, where it's a female-owned business. Uh, anyway, what's going on today? The video is fucking up. Of course, of course it is. Of course. Why wouldn't it? This isn't going to work. It's not me, man. I'm telling you. It's a bandwidth thing. I unplugged this router. Like, actually, I'm going to talk about this a little bit. So, I have a Wi Fi router, like most people probably do, and they probably don't know what the hell it is. Well, it's a Wi Fi connection wireless into your computer and network and all your connection of things, whatever. And, uh,. You need a password to get in there. But um, some people just are a bunch of fucking losers and they want to get into your Wi-Fi network and then they can quite possibly get into your PC depending if it's on, sleeping, whatever. And uh, anyway, to make a long story short, I just ordered a light timer. An old-fashioned rotary with little switches dip switches to turn a lamp off but the timer doesn't know what it's hooked up to so i'm gonna kill my wi-fi router when it's not needed through a timer uh, that'll serve two purposes it will increase my security and it's always a good idea in my opinion and experience to reboot your wowda your wowda <laughs> <laughs> you're wilder. There's something screwy going on around here, and that's what it is. So I'm going to reboot my router, too, which always puts everything into perfect working order. And if in doubt, reboot. So that's what I'm doing. But if your router's acting goofy, or we have bandwidth problems like this, hmm, reboot your router. What can I say? All right, so whatever. So that's that. So what else is going on? Where is my wish? <gasps> How? Whoa. Did I scare her away with my little... There she is. <gasps> Welcome to McDonald's. May I take your order? Good morning. Hello. How are you doing this morning other than having bandwidth issues? <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Yeah, the video is like, I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, it's kind of, I, I blame Comcast or Spectrum or who, do you have Comcast out there? Or, I'm sorry, Xfinity? Xfinity, that's who I have. Yep. Yeah. 
I always had issues with Xfinity. Well, usually I don't, and I haven't. Then they they really have taken care of me. They actually sent sent me a two hundred fifty dollar customer pre appreciation debit card at Christmas. Wow! Do you believe that shit? I opened it up and I look at it, and I'm like, "Well, this is from Xfinity and a gift for being a loyal customer, or whatever." And you know, I thought it'd be twenty five bucks or whatever. It was two hundred fifty bucks. Holy cow! Yeah. I swear to God. Yep. They never did anything like that for me, and uh, I had them suckers for years. Well, I have everything except cable with them, and, I, and I'm and i not subscribing to cable with anybody. But other than that, I got everything else. So. Yeah, I don't get uh, their... Uh, we have Spectrum on this side of the mountain. And uh, huh. they do, however, spend a big fortune... On their promos, to, for, trying to get people to get the TV along with the internet. Right. They, yeah. Yep. We get something at least once a week, mm-hmm. and it's usually these hard, either cardboard or like really heavy paper cards and ads and things. And it's like, you know, if you guys stop spending so much money on that crap, you could lower our rates. <laughs> I'm I'm I am not a huge fan of marketing the way that people have been doing it like commercials on TV. I don't even watch them. And it doesn't make me want to go buy something cuz I see a commercial no. on TV. I I don't get it. I just uh, you know I've I, never understood TV commercials. Mm-hmm. And I mean I've been in marketing most of my life. I've sold radio, I've sold outdoor advertising, the billboards and stuff. And those make sense because mm-hmm. you're either sitting in your car with your radio, you're listening, you're actively listening. When with outdoor advertising, you're driving past the billboard, you see it. It's part of your vision. Mm-hmm. But even back when we were kids, what did you do during a commercial? You got up, you ran to the bathroom, you ran to the kitchen. You did everything you could within those those 120 to 190 seconds, you know. So nobody was ever paying attention to them. The only commercials I paid attention to is when, when the next football game was going to start or just stuff like that. But <laughs> as far as buying anything and watching it on TV, as far yeah, as no. fast foods or whatever, I could really give a shit. It didn't didn't affect me one bit. No, yeah. not at all. Still doesn't. No. I still use commercials to go run, go run around the house and do things. Well, to be quite <laughs> to, to be quite honest, most commercials are so fucking stupid now. I just I just oh, walk yes. away in disgust. I'm like, are are you serious? The best commercials, believe it or not, are, are the insurance ones like Geico and uh, Liberty uh-huh. Liberty Mutual. Those are you know those that- are entertaining. So I like those. Is the Liberty Mutual the one with the ostrich? Yes. Or the emu? Yeah, the emu. Yes, I love those. I love those. <laughs> you you want to hear my idea about that? Huh? This this just shows the desperation and lack of creativity in Hollywood. Or they're not letting it out, whatever. I'm sure there's some really, really creative people out there, but they're not listening to them. Is they should make a movie with that emu and that guy. Oh, God. oh man, can you imagine? That would be freaking hilarious. I would laugh my fucking ass off because oh. I, I, I'm cr- the one I like the most is when he's pecking at the freaking mirror because he sees himself, his reflection. Yeah. I yeah. mean, and that's like a, a, a 60 second spot at the most. It's like, can you imagine making a movie with just stupid scenes like that? Through And, and he's a cop, right? He's a detective, right? Isn't he? Right. That, yeah. Well, he. Or what is sort he? Of, yeah. Well, whatever he is, it seems well, like they're in law enforcement. Because I, I remember seeing a commercial where they're trying to figure something out, and he's asking the emo what he thinks, and he's just doing emo things. And he goes, yeah, you're right. Good job. you know. Yeah. And then they write the shit down on a board because they're trying to figure things out. <laughs> so, Oh, those commercials are freaking awesome. I, I really think did they you, should make a movie. Go ahead. <laughs> like what I did you see mm-hmm. that they came out with a new Mikey Likes It commercial for live cereal? Nope, I didn't. The only thing I don't like about it 
and this is the, probably one of the few times that I will complain about the whole gender switching or, you know, switching up the role of somebody. Oh, yeah. They made Mikey a girl. Yeah, are, are you surprised? Since when, is Mikey, yeah. since when is Mikey a girl's name? I mean, I get it, you know, okay, we're trying to get away from all that kind of stuff. But I was totally expecting to see a short-haired little boy. Hmm. That 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 messed with me, but I'm, I'm, I think it's cool that they brought it back because that was such a huge popular commercial back in our day. From the seventies, yeah, yeah. Huh. Here, I mean, on. everybody said that. Try it, Mikey likes it. Hang on. What is wrong with my computer? Is everything working besides the video? Well, okay, so the video is working on the original stream just fine. All right. So yeah. it's, it, I think it, it may have to do with your bandwidth this morning. Okay, hang on. Listen, if it ever fucking plays, hello. There we go. What's this stuff? Some cereal. It's supposed to be good for you. Did you try it? I'm not going to try it. You try it. I'm not going to try it. Let's get Mikey. Yeah. He won't need it. He hates everything. He likes it. Hey, Mikey. When you bring life home, don't tell the kids it's one of those nutritional cereals you've been trying to get them to eat. You're the only one who has to know. There you go. I love that. For people don't oh, know. That brings, that brings back Saturday mornings in front of the TV watching cartoons, man. You know what? I never, we talked about this the other day. I never noticed. Those kids are from like the Bronx or something or Jersey or whatever. Really? Oh, yeah. If you listen real close, those little kids got their fucking accent. Oh, <laughs> I was like, whoa. Oh, yeah, it's I cool. never thought about it. Yeah. No, I just, I just picked it up. I never, never. Well, I'm from Chicago, so I saw that when I was a kid. Oh, I, yeah. I wouldn't have picked it up. It's like, oh, they're talking like me. What the fuck is wrong with you? That, you know, that's probably what I yeah. thought. So I don't hear no accent. What's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, here. I think she likes it. Is this the new one? Yeah. Is the new one out? Yeah, the new one's out because I saw it on the TV. I've only seen it once. And it's Life Cereal, the same thing? Yeah, it's still Life Cereal. Life Cereal commercial. 2000. No. Could that be it? Let me see if I can find it off my giveaway. Mm. I'll play this one. I don't I don't know. Is this it? This is from 2000, not the 70s. God, man, my bandwidth is horrible. Any day Which now. We are having, we're, we are What's having major stuff? solar flares, so, so it's cereal, affecting cell phones, it's affecting you. our I'm not computers try it. and stuff. You try it. Okay, here, let me play this one. Finally uh, loaded. I'm not going to try it. Let's get Mikey. Yeah. He won't need it. He hates everything. No, it's just him being older. I found That's it. Not it. I found it. Did you? Is it on YouTube? Okay. Uh, I don't know. Hang on. Uh, it's Okay, wait. Is that it? No, that's picture. That's picture. Uh, hang on. Ah, yep, I found it. Okay, I'm sending you a link. On my phone? Oh, shoot. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I can't, it won't work if I send it to you on your phone because you can't. No, nope. is it on YouTube though? Do you know? Um, let me see. Now I know what it looks like at the beginning. What's the title of it? Live TV commercial, picky eater proof. Oh, that's on iSpot. I don't even know what that is. I can't believe YouTube doesn't have it. 
that, that I, is I'm so not finding racist. it. Life TV commercial. Life cereal, I should probably put. Go, uh, I did a search for new Mikey commercial and then went to videos. And it's the top one. And it's on iSpot TV. iSpot.tv. New Mikey. Oh, there's Mr. Sharp, Mr. Whipple. Oh, my God. <laughs> fuck. That's uh, another one. Oh, man. <laughs> Jump speed to Simon. <laughs> what did you tell me? Yeah, exactly. What did you... God, you're taking me back. What did you say to type for the title? Uh, new Mikey commercial is what I put in search. Mikey. And then I clicked on I clicked on the video search instead of the others. There's new Mikey likes it. Maybe that's it. Yep. Here it is. 16 seconds. Hello again, Mikey. Life, sure ain't anything healthy. Oh, it's off the TV. Oh. Oh, it's not even, that's not even close to the same no, one. Wow. Huh. It was a 15 anyway. second commercial. It's crazy. Hmm. Yeah, not the but same. Yeah. But yeah, they, they switched it to a girl, which I mean, it doesn't bother me that much. It, it was just weird. Well, it's, <laughs> it's not even the same commercial, even no, no matter the gender, the act, the child actor, it doesn't matter. It's not even whatever. I, I, if you're going to do something, at least rip it off and be it similar, <laughs> you know. Like, uh, well, it was. It was. They had the kids sitting around the table and the dad's like pouring the cereal. And, oh, okay. Um, and the two, you know, the other kids are like, no, I'm not trying. And then they give it to Mikey and Mikey likes it. So. Right. But Mikey has pigtails, I think. <laughs> mm, okay. Well. Whatever I, I yeah, it's like something should still be left alone, and I think that's one of them. But yeah, and once again, it's not going to make me go buy Life cereal because it's a stupid commercial. But whatever, I eat Life cereal anyway. <laughs> so yeah, I, I'm never. And been, it wasn't because of the commercial. The only cereal I eat is grape nuts, and that's it. And it's very rare. So, but whatever. Hmm. Is anybody ever going to call? Is anybody listening to us live or is this all? Uh, actually, we have Larry and Pam in the uh, chat room. Okay. Well, and we I, do have a call in number that works. That call in number that's on the page actually does work. So y'all are welcome to call in. Yeah, but some people they, can't look at their huh? phone. So, I mean, that's, and then they can't write it down. Where is that fucking yeah. phone? What do they do with it? What is it? 815-975. What is it? 815-975-3089. There you go. 3089. So call that. Somebody call. Someone be the first caller, damn it. <laughs> we haven't had a, an actual guest yet. <laughs> well, they're not a guest. They're a listener. So, I mean, I know what you're saying. Well, yeah. We just haven't had anybody besides you and I. Talking on a stupid fucking show. And I want people to call. It's so much more fun. <laughs> it really is. And I, and honestly, I just don't. If I was listening to this, I just don't want to listen to you and me. No offense to either one of us. <laughs> I, I don't. Because it's like, because that's what I'm waiting for. All, all they do is just talk like they're talking on the phone to each other. It's like, well, you know what? then why don't you pick up the fucking phone and call and get in the conversation because that's what it's about. And I really necessarily wouldn't argue with that opinion because if I listen to radio or other uh, radio shows or whatever, that's what it sounds like to me too. But there's nothing wrong with it. No. No. And I mean, that's how most morning shows are really when you, when you listen to them because they just banter back and forth. Yeah, unless there's three or five of them, you got you got the radio personality, yeah. the sidekick, the sports person, the weather person, the news. There's at least five freaking people that are usually in it. So, 
true. Yeah, and they all bounce off of each other. And on top of that, then you got music and commercials, and then you have people calling in. I mean, it's it's endless. But this right now is you and I, which is fine, but I'm just saying, <clears throat> call in. We'll start getting call in soon, I'm sure. Oh, you br- by the way, that intro, that that was freaking awesome. I was waiting for a comment on that. Before we get into that, I can't sign into the <laughs> chat room. Um, I actually I have an email into support about uh people who log in as guests. Yeah, right. Um, we're having some some random issues with it. What is it doing for you? Okay, so I'll type I'll just type something. Hello. H E L L O. Hit send. Then the little sign in thing pops up and it automatically logs me in as guest. And then it goes right back to the screen and I'm not there. My comment's not there. Weird. Okay, that that's the exact same issue that others uh have been having. Yeah. And um yeah, so I've I've got a uh I've got an email in about it. Mm. See, and I'm missing. So hopefully, they will get back soon. I'm missing these conversations. Larry Smith. Da-da-da. Larry Smith is actually down in Belize. No way. Yes. Well, I want to be best friends with him because I want to go to Belize. I hear it's absolutely fucking beautiful down there. Oh. I've had some awesome conversations with Larry. And, oh. uh, yeah. That's one of the few countries. Yeah, they have a compound down there. Oh, do they? That's yeah. interesting you just said that because, um, you know, it got back to me through people back in Illinois. Well, fuck, I'll just tell the whole story. From my son, and I've been dry, buying dry, storable food ever since, um, well, after the meltdown. And at that time, I had a whole family. Well, not a whole family. Me and my wife and my son. Then he went into the Army, but... Anyway, I kept buying it because the shelf life on it's usually 20 years, dehydrated food. Oh, yeah. And, of course, when my whole life fell apart and I was a gypsy and I didn't have a place to live and I moved six times in the past two years, I had to put all that food in er, somewhere because I'm not throwing it away. It's expensive. So I shoved it at my sister's house because she said I could move in with her and then she changed her mind because she has teenagers so, and I I know the reason behind that, because if I would have lived with her, I would have straightened her fucking kids out in two seconds. So, yeah. she's one of those moms that doesn't want to upset her children, and I could really honestly give a shit if I had upset my kids. If you're being a little asshole, you're going to, you know, you're going to know. You're gonna, uh, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, you're not behaving yeah. like that. You're just not. So, anyway... So I put some in there, and then she goes, you can't move here. And I literally forgot about that. And then I put the rest of it in um, my parents' house when I was in Chicago over the holidays. And the first thing my mom said is, can you really get rid of this food? And I'm like, ma, I'm like. Why? Why? I, I don't know. I don't know what the big fucking deal is, god damn it. Their, their, their basement is like. 1,500 square feet. It's huge. And and I'm taking up maybe, I don't know, uh, 20 square feet, 20 by five, maybe 100 square feet, if that. And it's like, you know, it, it's like I put um, packs of dynamite and fucking drugs and all this other stuff in their house. And they're like, can you please get rid of this stuff? I don't want it here. I'm uh. like, what in the fuck That's am I? So I'm a thousand weird. miles away. What the fuck do you want me to? I didn't say this to my mom, but I'm I'm thinking out loud here. <laughs> like, what do you want me to do? You want me to drive my car another thousand miles just to get this stuff, or go get a rental place here in Illinois for fifty bucks and put it there because that ain't worth all of it, and I will throw it out. But you're throwing out food. So then I finally... Yeah, I, I can't understand that. I don't know, but it, it got back to me again through my son because they were all out for uh, my son's birthday Saturday and they all celebrated it last weekend. And my sister brought up 
to my son, can you come get, get that food out of here? Your dad brought it. And Josh is like, no, I'm not fucking doing that. And then uh, then my mom or dad goes, well, you're not bringing it to our house. We got enough of that shit here. And I'm like, what in the fuck? <laughs> what is the big deal? So anyway, when my mom and I were having this conversation, she's like, can you get rid of this? I go, mom, what's going to happen when Nancy Pelosi bangs on your door and wants your guns away from you and it's martial law? And she didn't say anything. <laughs> Not that they have guns, but it was just the whole point of what happens. Forget the prepping thing and it's the end of the world because I just was on InfoWars and that type of land is, is being purchased left and right. People are starting to freak out again about heading for the hills. And I think it's because of this coronavirus, which I, I I will talk about it. I don't really want to. I want time to play out yeah. here because every time a virus comes up, everybody's going to die. So it's like, eh. Well, yeah. So I don't want to sensationalize yeah, I think, it. Yeah, the big thing is, you know, this one is man-made. And that I think that's why people are freaking out more. Oh, you mean like Lyme's disease? Like that kind of man-made thing? No, I didn't know Lyme disease. Oh, was. yeah, uh, yeah, allegedly, yeah, yeah. But yeah, um, and by the way, we are actually going to start advertising for uh, Patriot Patriot Foods. Patriot Foods, good. I I bought that. It's good stuff. It, it really is. Yeah, I was looking at their site. They've got some packs that are just amazing. They've got like this five hundred dollar pack. That's got a little solar battery charger thing and uh, water purifier, all kinds of stuff in there along with the food. Well, here <clears throat> here's my ideology or thinking process on this because I'm a fighter and I'm I'm gonna do what I can to survive until you know, within my power until I can't. And people are like, well, if it gets that bad, do you really want to live? And I'm like, you know what? I don't really fucking know because I don't know what the scenario is gonna be. I mean, I mean, if a nuke is launched over here, we're we're going to be the first to go here in this part of the, <laughs> well, the yeah. country. I mean, we're ground zero. Well, yeah. I'm sure most of them are aimed oh, yeah. for Colorado, Wyoming, um, parts of Nebraska, wherever the missile silos are, silos are. A Cheyenne Mountain, you know, we're done. <laughs> we're fucking done. Oh yeah, Cheyenne. Uh, I remember when I first moved to Colorado Springs mm. and realized that Cheyenne Mountain was like right there. Yep. And it was like, well, if we ever get bombed, we're going to be gone. Right. <laughs> At least it'll be instant. <laughs> and that's what that's my thinking process because, I mean, really, you're going to get – I don't want to be just like I'm asking to die or people taking this the wrong way, but, you know, are you really going to feel anything at 4,000 degrees and vaporize or whatever the temperatures are? I mean, you're not. It's, it's going to be over – you know, like kaboom, like a, an ignition, you're, you're oh, done. Yeah. You know, so it's like, but that's the worst case scenario. But let's just say natural disasters. Let's say this uh, coronavirus gets so bad, everybody's quarantined and locked down. How much food do you have to last? For most people, maybe it's a week. If that. Right. Most, I mean, most honestly, most people, they buy the groceries for whatever their payday span is. Right. And that's it. Well, if you're locked down, you can't go to the grocery store, and the trucks can't go to the store to deliver it. So we're, we're just so brainwashed in the ease of convenience that, oh, okay, it's it's martial law, but I'll run down to Safeway and get some groceries. It's like, no, you dumb fucker. You, you can't go anywhere, and they don't have any food because the trucks are stopped. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, and it's probably going to get looted anyway. I mean, it's it, the whole point of it is I don't know what's going to happen, how people are going to react. But there's nothing wrong with preparing, uh, at least in the food sense, to feed you. And if you don't really care about yourself, then then do it for your fucking kids, you know, your wife exactly. or, or whatever, and your dog and your pets. I mean, you're a protector and provider. That's your role. So you know, buy the food for them and starve your fucking ass. I, I don't really care. But you're responsible for taking care of the people under your roof. And I think this is part of that. Oh, I, I agree completely. I've, I've always been a bit of a prepper. Um, 
I'm always, you know, which, I mean, my goal is to be off grid anyway. So. Yeah, that's a big, that's a big thing right now, trying to get um, people off the grid. A lot of them are doing it. And supposedly that's a long-term plan to everybody is to get people off the grid, but I don't know. I, I don't. Well, I don't my, know what my goal is to actually get some land where, and set up a, I've, I've been planning this community for like 15 years. And, um, love you. And, uh, I want, I want a place where people can come mm -hmm. to escape everything, you know? Yep. And regardless if it's just life in general or an actual disaster of some sort. Hmm. Well, I was told by a certain somebody that uh, that's a long-term goal and getting off the grid, and each house is going to have um, like a hydrogen-powered generator to power the house. It's going to all there's going to be no more power plants. That would be nice. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and there's going to be. I'm I'm sorry. I'm one of those people. I don't like the whole power plant thing. I've never never felt real secure with nuclear energy no. and things like that. Not after Three Just, Mile Island. I'll never forget that. I was, in 1979, I was 15 years old. I remember yeah. that like it happened yesterday. Yep, I was nine, nine, ten years old. And then Fukushima, look at that. I still don't I still don't care what they say. That shit's still leaking into the fucking ocean. So. Well, they admit it's still leaking in I know, the but they, they don't. They admit they're freaking dumping in it. They don't tell you that, and it's pretty much contaminated everything up until, until Alaska as far as uh, sea life. So, but, you know, they, they don't they don't report on that, so. No. No, and our, it's killing our oceans, and once, mm -hmm. once our oceans die, we're screwed. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> we're just screwed. <laughs> yeah, but they won't, uh. They won't. They won't. They won't report on that. So, I don't no, know. of course not. But again, I don't think there's anything wrong with prepping. And uh, I actually have a little bit of food. I don't really, honestly, know because when I moved here, my head was in my ass. And I, pl I played that. We can get into this if you want. The beginning of that thing about a sociopath because it popped up again last night. And and to be quite honest, it keeps taking me. Um, I don't want to say in dark thinking but i just i just don't want to keep getting pulled back into it but i want people to know about it because i didn't know what it was and i didn't know what was happening to me and i like i said i know what a psychopath and a narcissist not a psychopath so yes i'm sorry it gets confusing a <laughs> sociopath and a narcissist i know that but i had no idea whatsoever what a sociopath was i i just i didn't i think i knew of the the term by hearing it yeah. or seeing it in movies or whatever. But as far as experiencing it in real life uh, n n with one degree of separation or right next to me or whatever, uh, no, I've never done that. And people don't know it until it's too late. So that woman explains it as oh, best. She as, explained it really well. Yeah. As best as I've ever, um, but it's it's way more than that. But but just to wake people up a little bit because that's what this show's about. To say, whoa, mm -hmm. I I know somebody like that, or my boyfriend's like that, or my girlfriend's like that, or my stepdad's like my that, mother. or my <laughs> yeah, my mom or what? I, I I will bet you any amount of money because they say psychopaths, sociopaths. Here we go. I'm gonna speak. Sociopaths are like one percent of the pop population and i really think that's a low number i, I think there's more pe and people than that even when you think about that though one percent of our population that's a whole lot of them it's too many whatever it is i'll, I'll, I'll agree with you there but they're so intrinsic and latent you know they're they, most of them aren't even discovered because people don't know what's happening to them and then the victims think they're fucking nuts and yeah. unless you have a really good, my therapist identified it in five minutes. He goes, oh, you're a lot of sociopath oh, yeah. in your family. I go, what the fuck is that? And he told me, and I'm like, oh, my God. Then I did my homework on it, and I'm like, whoa. 
<laughs> Whoa. I've I've had I've done therapy a few different times trying to get myself figured out and Good get luck. rid of all these yeah. anxiety issues. Good and luck stuff. with that. Yeah, go ahead. And back in the it was mid nineties. Um I was seeing a military therapist because I was married to a guy in the military. And she's the one who put the seed in my head about my mother. And she just kept asking me, you know, like, why do you put your mother on such a high pedestal? And I, I never could answer her directly. And I really, I tried to blow it off, but because she planted that seed, it made me start really paying attention to the way she acted. And it definitely pulled her off the pedestal, Mm -hmm. big time. She fell off that pedestal and hit hard. Mm. And um, I actually, I thought it was interesting that you played that this morning, because as you know, yesterday was my, my grandma's birthday. Right. And she and I are kind of the black sheep of the family right now. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it's all due to her. To your mom? Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Um, I was, you know, I called my grandma last night and, and of course, you know, she was extremely upset because it was her 89th birthday and uh, she couldn't, couldn't even talk to her own kids. Her own kids didn't even acknowledge her. See that that's what scares the hell out of me and that that's very sad. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that. Um but that lady even said who's a, a therapist and everything and knows all about sociopaths. The guy said, "What do you do when you find out you're dating one or whatever?" and she said, "You know, run pretty much, you yeah, know. Run. Stay away." But see <laughs> run that, and hide. But the thing is, they're so clever. Because what happened to me is he infiltrated my family. I didn't know what was going on. I invited him with open arms. Diagnosed by my therapist, not me. And that's how I got into this crazy world. Not that it's crazy enough of sociopathy. And in the beginning, there's so many signs that that I saw, but I I didn't know what I was seeing. Does that make any sense? Oh, totally. Totally. Because I'm pretty smart, and I've had plenty of, of psychotherapy myself. Plenty. And I can read people and everything else and blah, 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 blah. Something was off with this guy. I didn't like him from day one. The thing is, neither did my wife and then my daughter. And and the thing about him is, is that when they realize they're being identified or the light's being shown on them, they change, like that woman said, or the guy said, I have a friend that dated a sociopath and he, you know, it didn't work out and then he changed everything to be who she wanted and then exactly a year later said, I fooled you, I did this, uh, you know, and go fuck yourself. That's what they do. Yeah. When, when they start oh, yeah. getting called oh, yeah. out, they turn into a chameleon. See, but he didn't fool me. But then my wife at the time wanted him out of the family. My daughter was going was gonna to divorce him. He was talking to his ex girlfriend, among other things that I that I don't know. Oh wow! But yeah, so he was being called out. Well, then I was, I, he worked for me, uh, and a customer told me, "Oh, and I love uh, I don't want to bring his name up, but I love uh, Blankety. I'll call him Bob, you know." And we just had <laughs> we have these great conversations about this and about that, which had nothing to do with work or taking care of my customer. It was personal things. So yeah. this guy's married to my fucking daughter. So that that was it. So I went and I told my daughter and then she apparently confronted him. And then that is when I became the mark. Yep. And since then, he's too much of a coward to say something to me. He went right into my wife's head and then even more into my daughter's head. And he turned into to the chameleon. To yeah. He's the he's the good guy. He's the victim. Look what Tim's doing to me. And then that's when this alleged video came up that I was out with friends and I was on a double date. And that's the only thing my wife had to see. And I was cooked. Oh, yeah. But I didn't know. But I didn't know what was going on. Well, of course not. 
And it's, because they keep everybody separated and they they make sure that all their conversations are one on one, so that way they have deniability. Well, here's the scary part, though. He was in in the restaurant with supposedly a friend at the time. Instead of coming up and saying hi to me, there was a video showing this because it, it was showed to my wife at the time, and that was it. A scorned woman in betrayal seeing a video <laughs> of your husband. That's all it took. That that's all it took. Uh, yeah. It it probably didn't come from the restaurant because I looked into it, and it could not be obtained without a court order. So that means that probably he took the video with his cell phone. Now, what kind of fucking person would do that? Well, yeah. A sociopath, that's who. You know, when she was talking about that whole part about they won't go to therapy unless they have to. Right. Compliance. When I was when I was 15, I actually asked my mom to take me to therapy because I thought I was losing my mind. That's what Thank you. Exactly. You, and she yeah. refused. Her answer to it was if you think you're crazy, you're not. Yeah. No, you are going insane. Crazy, pe- crazy people don't recognize when they're crazy. No, you Crazy people do. You are going insane. And in- it's like, okay. <laughs> you are going insane, and that's what you don't understand. And then it's pushed to, the, to a deeper level because I was almost there. Oh, yeah. And then the anxiety kicked in, and I'm like, what is going on? And then I, I went to therapy and, and it was all revealed to me. And then it was like a light went off and I'm go, oh, my God, now it all makes sense. But most people can't figure that out. And when my family, when my wife and my daughter were betraying me, betraying me and then taking the side of him and making me the bad guy and I'm a piece of shit because I'm double dating on my wife and blah, 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 blah. Then they tried to get my son to turn, and he started to, and then he backed off, and he and he didn't. But they almost got him to turn against me too. So when your be- when your when your trusted own family blood starts turning on you, and a total stranger comes in and can do that to your family and yeah. to you, you go fucking crazy, man. You go crazy. Yeah. You do. Yeah, you definitely do. Because it's like there's no way. That's my family. Yeah, it's you it's hard to accept that your own family can do can treat you that way. Not only accept it, it it, 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 it even can happen. I mean I know that's the same thing. But that's that's just yeah. like you know, that's like you walk outside and you start floating away. Well, wait a minute. The laws of gravity don't allow that. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. it, it, it's like this should not be happening. What's going on? And that would make someone go batshit crazy, too. Go walk out your door and start floating okay. up to the sky. What the fuck? You know? I mean, what's going on? That's how surreal and just like, and of course you're in like, no, no, not you know, not my family. They got my back. That's my wife of 27 years and my daughter. And No, 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 we've been through hell and blah, 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 blah. No, that's exactly what's going on. Yep. That's exactly what's going on. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it, it can be, well, it is very traumatic. Um, oh, it's the worst thing I ever yeah, been through. I mean, here we are, you know, at, at 50 and... You know, we we realize what's happened, but we still sit sit back and go, hmm, how do I deal with this? Well, you can't. I, I mean, the only way you can <laughs> deal with it is to recognize it and calling it out for what it is. Because here's the thing. When you start doing that and you start calling it out for what it is, then people think you're crazy anyway. But then when you figure it out and call it out for what it really is... Now you're really fucking nuts. And in reality, you're gaining yeah. your sanity back because you're figuring it out. Right. Right. Yeah, well, that's, that's fucked up, man. Like every, okay, like the whole, you know, whenever you confront them thing. Mm-hmm. Whenever I confront her, that's when she cuts me off completely. Yeah. And I haven't talked to her in August. It'll be two years now. Well, without getting too per- on, this ra- on this round, the, yeah, the last well, one was like seven. <laughs> well, you don't you don't know how close I am to if anybody is so he's starting to infiltrate my mom and dad and my sister and my nieces and nephews wow. now, and that's only oh, because 
I told my daughter to get right with her grandparents because she was withholding yeah. her, my parents' great grandkids from them because of the divorce because she sided with her mom. And I still oh, haven't yeah. seen them in five years. I haven't seen either one of them, the grandkids. Uh, but when that happened, then of course she's married to Mr. Wonderful. And uh, then he's, of course, getting back in there. And I'm sure he's pulling the same tactics he did with my wife and saying all that. I've caught him lying. I've caught him lying. But the thing about these people is nobody wants to make them accountable. I think of them like mass murderers. I really do. I, I mean, you you destroyed my family without physically killing people. But you destroyed the bond and the trust and all the mental things in the family structure without harming anybody. Yeah. That's how I look at these people. It's just total destruction of who yeah. they target. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's... Um... And the, the the control factors. That's what it's all are about. Just beyond. That's what it's all about. Power and control. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. In times that I have absolutely desperately needed help, I've had a back turned. And <laughs> times mm -hmm. when I was doing okay, I got offered help. Mm -hmm. But if I accepted the help, it was always held over my head. Yeah. Well. Yeah, you right. Know. Yeah. Well, then they shouldn't have offered it to you if you're going to use it, it well, as leverage. Well, it's all part of the, the narcissistic sociopathic control. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, my ex-wife just thinks this guy is just, well, she picked him above her own husband with marriage vows and yeah. didn't like him in the beginning. That's what dumbfounds me. <laughs> didn't like him at all and saw what he did to my daughter and just, then he played the chameleon game. But he knew I called. Yep. He knew he wasn't going to fool me. I, there's just no way. So, well, what did something happen to your mom traumatically to to turn her into a sociopath or? No, because um, they say that. Definitely that's, not. They say she that. was. Um, I, I, you know, since being back in contact with my grandma because she had, she had gotten us to separate. Mm. Um. My grandmother was actually convinced that the work that I do as a online operations manager, mm -hmm. that I was doing things illegally. Oh, isn't that nice? Helping to, pe helping to build people's business, I was doing something illegal. And yeah. she was convinced of it. Yeah, that's just and ridiculous. so through the reconnection, we've both been sharing our stories, our side of what, what has gone on for the last 50 freaking years. And mm. it's it's really eye opening when you get two people who have have been under attack by somebody like that for years, right? And they finally they finally have that conversation, yeah. And their minds are just blown, right? Because it's just like we have lost all these years, yep. Because somebody else was feeding us lies and keeping us separated, and that's exactly what they do, yeah. And that's. I never thought in a million years anything would destroy my family unless it was something that I really did, you know, like like cheated on my wife or fucking was just an asshole or all the above or or whatever, you know, like a narcissist or even a yeah. psychopath for that matter. But it didn't. I didn't do anything. And it was all circumstantial. And it just amazes me. And quite honestly, it keeps me uh, at bay with getting in a relationship with somebody again because if somebody can come <laughs> yeah, in, <it> does. <laughs> if somebody can come in, a total stranger and destroy a tightly knit Brady Bunch fucking very happy family uh, and destroy all that by just circumstantial stuff, then yeah. I don't want to take that risk again because, but it's because of the person I picked. My wife had some issues forever and obviously still does because she's weak minded and insecure. So, but if I pick the right woman, because if I would say, listen, if this happened, what would you do? And if she doesn't say nothing short of, I would tell him to go fuck himself. And you know what? Let's get <laughs> let's get Tim in this conversation. What you're telling me, that's what that would yeah. be the normal, healthy response. But no, it was all kept from me. Yeah. I had no idea what was going on. It was all hidden from me. So, 
I really don't want to take that chance. If there's people out there that can come in and do that to my yeah. family. How how are you to guarantee yourself that you're not going to get fooled? You can't. <laughs> you can't. Exactly. Hence why I've been single for over 10 years now <laughs> and not even dating. And they're very close. Yeah, right. I, and that's how I am, too. It's been two years, you know, and I wish it was longer, to be perfectly honest. But uh, two years for me. And it's just like I can't. I can't. You know, I did it the last time here for a 10-day stunt, but then that that just was even crazier, <laughs> believe it or not. And it's like, it's like, you know, what's the chances of me, you know, it, it's just, I must attract crazy people. I mean, I'm being honest. I don't, I don't know. Well, I, I don't know what it is. One of the, one of the big things about narcissists and sociopaths and all of that whole genre of people is that they target strong people mm -hmm. because that is such an accomplishment to them right to be able to take a strong person exactly and tear them down and destroy them right and that's exactly what happened and absolutely destroy them it's, that's right it's such a major accomplishment for them and i tell everybody you know, somebody that somebody who's not as strong is going to you know, they're, it's like, it's, it's too easy. <laughs> yeah, no, I was very strong, but see, I guess my weakness was I trusted my wife and my daughter, which people would say, I wouldn't What's, call that a weakness. That's though. what I was just going to say. People will say, there's nothing wrong with that, Tim. Well, okay. That's what you're supposed to do. Exactly. It's by default. Once again, walking out the door and gravity's going to keep your ass to the ground. I, I can guarantee you when I'm done with the show and I walk out that fucking door, I'm not going to float off into space. That's the same thing. No. I can guarantee you my wife and my daughter and my family have my back. But you know what? Mm -hmm. I walked out the door thinking that and I floated away. And I'm like, what in the fuck is going on? on and people who look at it from the outside who aren't directly involved they don't understand it no they, they can't just cannot comprehend what's going on well once again it's like me telling you how it is to be pregnant in childbirth ain't gonna happen <laughs> it's never gonna happen so I don't get it. I can pretend I can get it and I understand it, but unless you're in, see, and that's the thing and that's their advantage because they know that, you know, that you don't know, you know what I'm saying? They, they don't, they know they're going to come at you and you will have no idea what's happening to you. They know that. Yeah. Yeah. Cause they manipulate you from the beginning. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, my son and I were talking about this and he goes, you know, when did mom and when did our family start falling apart? And I said, when, uh, my son-in-law came into our family, that's when it started. And that's exactly when it started. Yeah. And the meltdown didn't help in that, but I didn't lose everything because of that. I actually recovered from that. I, I lost everything because my wife betrayed me and turned my back on me and sided with a complete stranger who is a sociopath. And she still has his back. Not to mention, I don't want to make this about her. She, when I was still talking to her a year ago, she was thrown into court in a deposition with her current husband's ex-wife because they got a bunch of money and she wanted to know where it was from and it was fucking from me. So his ex-wife pulled my ex-wife into court and they had a deposition and he was doing some naughty things. She just re reconciled with him. I don't, I don't get any of it, but I don't want to talk about that. I want to just say this is that after the deposition, her husband's ex-wife came up to my ex-wife and said, by the way, you married a sociopath. Wow. So there you go. So, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know if she attracts them. I don't know if she, I, I, I don't know. But if there's not that many out there, then how in the fuck did you be, be, <laughs> befriend I one? I <laughs> yeah, how did you find two within a matter of a few years? You know? <laughs> yeah, we seem to be magnets for them. 
But I, I we're both know. very strong personalities too. Well, she's so. very weak though. She's very inse- unless you're, of course you're me, and she says the words "I'm going to destroy you." I mean, that's what she said. She can be strong when she wants to be, but she's pr- a pretty meek, insecure person. Yeah. She's low. She's Most low fruit. lying fruit. She, especially when I'm not there to protect her, which is apparent. So she's yeah. open to the world now, and she's really finding out what it is, but she hasn't realized it yet. But, but yeah, how can? How, hopefully, she will. No, she you won't. Know, no, she won't. Sake. No, she won't. <laughs> She'll sacrifice herself before she figures that out or does anything about it. So yeah. that's why I gave up. I just told her. I said, you know what? I'm done. I'm gonna disavow any thing to do with you or if I talk to you I don't know you because and I don't I don't know this woman and it's like you wasted 30 years of my life I wish I could have it back and I'm done don't ever contact me again and it's and and for me to say that <laughs> um to the woman that I married and had two kids with for 27 years um that's that just tells you how bad it is or was or whatever Oh, so. yeah. And I mean, those effects, the effects of going through those traumas, it affects every area of our lives. Oh, absolutely. Um, it's a bomb. It's it's yeah, a I, collateral damage I bomb that goes off. Yeah, it is. Yep. And um, I, I picked up a new client yesterday. And while we were talking on the phone... I, we, you know, just were jibber jabbering and getting to know each other. And I brought up the fact that I have a huge guilt complex, especially when it comes to my work. You know, you know, I work, you know, from the time I get up in the morning until the time I go to bed. And I can't even sit and watch a movie without feeling guilty about not being on my computer and doing something productive. That's ridiculous. And, that comes directly from the abuse that I got from my mother. Hmm. Because I was always told how lazy I was and things like that. Did and you... so now hmm. it's so ingrained in my head that I constantly have to be productive that I can't even sit down and enjoy a movie and sit still. Yeah, that's control and power. And uh, Did she ever call you a loser? Oh, I could give you a whole list of names. No, I don't I care. Called. I don't care about though. No, I don't care about any of them. Did she ever call you a loser? Oh yeah. Yeah. Wow. I've been called white trash. Wow. I've been called all kinds of things. You know what? No offense to you, but fuck your mother. You know you. you, you oh, no offense taken, dude. Yeah, I, I, I'm. I mean, pe- when when I say that, people are like, "Oh my god, this guy's a real asshole." He just told someone to go fuck his mother. You know what? You have to walk away from that kind of stuff, which I I, I know you did. I'm not telling you nothing you don't know or you haven't done. But to disengage from your own mother is just, it's like you don't do that. Well, I know it destroys you, but we're trained that no matter what, family stays together, know how fucked up it is, and you don't walk away from your mom or your dad or your son or your daughter or, or whatever. You just don't do that because... Your family and and you are supposed to stick around for that abuse. It's almost like being in a uh, chemical dependency um, relationship or a child of an alcoholic, oh, which I am. So my dad was a drunk. It definitely is. Yeah, and, and it's like, but being a kid and a minor, what are you gonna do? Move out? You can't fuck it. You know, you right. can't do anything. So you just have I to. Tried to. <laughs> You have to be strong enough, but that's just the normalized complacency, which is the lack of a better term. You don't know any better or any different. That's normal for you. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what we grow up with. And even though in our hearts we know it's not right, there is something just not right about this situation. Right. There's nothing we can do about it. Except leave. Yeah, I ran away when I was 15. No, I'm not surprised. And... I got picked up by the police, and I was given the choice of going home or going to adult jail. No, juvie home or home? Great. Whatever. I chose jail, (laughs) but they still made me go home. Oh, Jesus. That's bad. Yeah. Huh. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. I, at 15, I chose to go, I wanted to go to a adult women's jail rather than go home. That right there should have told the cops something. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I at a point in my life, because I was around that age, 15, and I ran away, but I just lived with a friend for a couple of weeks. But if I would have gotten in trouble with the law and they would have said that, I probably would have said the same thing because I it was just so fucked up. My dad was a yeah. fucking asshole. I mean, he, he wanted to beat the hell out of me. And one time, and I'll, I'll share this. I don't care. I'm writing a book about this shit anyway. But one time, <laughs> my dad had me by the neck in the garage and was ready to hit me. And my mom said, if you hit him, we are done. See, my but, mom sat and watched it. Yeah. See, that when it gets to that point in the physical abuse, which... Which is not as bad, believe it or not, in my opinion, as the mental abuse. I'd rather have someone beat oh, the shit no. out of me. But when you have both of them, it, it was a matter of control and submission in my dad's resentment of, because I don't, I, I think he treated me like that because I wasn't his kid. Uh, because he treated my sister totally different. But there was some resentment and anger in him about me. And when he came home drunk every night, and then of course I'm a 15-year-old teenager, not listening to him. Of course, I'm not going to listen to you. I'm a fucking 15 year old. Give me a break. <laughs> right. You know, well, I'll come <laughs> you. 15 year old listens to anybody. I told you to cut the grass <laughs> and you didn't cut it. Well, Dad, I'm sorry. I was all busy playing with my friends. Yeah, I mean, whatever. You know, I'm a fucking 15 year old. Give me a break. But to kick someone's ass or beat them because they didn't cut the grass or whatever I did. And it was just stupid shit like that. Not cleaning my room, whatever. Oh, yeah. It was a control. And he tried to submit me into submission. And I made the stupid mistake of going to work for him, too. And it just got his partner was a narcissist. And I didn't know what that was either. You talk about a just mean tempered, flying off the handle, yelling at fucking people. That was this guy. So then I was exposed to that. And it, it was just it was horrible. But he tried pounding me into submission, too. And it's not going to happen. You are not going to break me. You're not you're going to no. have to kill me. You're oh, not breaking me. me off. Well, well, <laughs> but see, but then, then you got to deal with that anger, and 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 what do you do with that? Except try yeah. to use it to motivate. Especially you. when you, especially when you're 15. But it, but yeah, well, and then I just started drinking, and I went to the bar with my dad when I was 21 because again, I didn't know any different. If you can't beat him, join him. You know, so. Mm-hmm. And plus, we would drink with them when we were minors, and we were playing cards, and my friends would come over because our house was the house where where the kids came over because my parents were cool, you know. So I mean, it was, yeah, you know. And well, my mom was just oblivious, though. My dad was the one that was cool in that respect for that. But um, yeah, I didn't know any better. Yeah, and I'm not making how, excuses. How are you supposed to, it's all you know. Yeah, I'm not making excuses. I didn't know any better. I thought that was the way it was. And that's how most most people who go through abuse are. You know, they they don't realize that they're not the ones at fault. No, but then when you start when you start um, well when you have negative consequences for your own actions and things aren't right and you just know they're not right but you don't know why then that's when you start rebelling even more and it's like wait a minute this isn't this isn't right I got and, and then you got to break away from your family to. Um, I did that. I didn't talk to my parents for 10 years because after I got done working for him, I worked for somebody else and they fired me. And then I started my own business. And then he actually threatened me because my dad was in the same industry. Yeah. He threatened me. Wow. So it's like, really? Gee, thanks dad. I mean, treat me like shit. Don't take care of me. (laughs) Yeah. I'm, I'm literally writing a book, but it's tight. I don't want to say the title because I don't want anybody stealing it, but it's not, it doesn't focus on this stuff. It's just, I'm going through it, um, from the time I got out of high school and then married and kids and blah, 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 blah. Cause I'm not going to put my childhood into it. Cause it's like, Oh, I, you know, how many, how many times is everybody going to blame their childhood? Well, you know what? I'm not blaming it. It's just the fucking way it is. Okay. That was yeah, my reality. Part of everything. Yeah. yeah. But be that as it may, I'm starting from when I got out of high school or right in high school to get married and have my kids and work in and start my business and being successful to to being um, destroyed. And the last chapter is called Rocky Mountain High, which is moving here. And uh, it, there probably won't be a happy ending because um, it depends on how you look at it. But 
it, it's not. For it to be, I think the ending, honestly, I think the ending should be to be continued. Well, that's what it's going to be because that's it's still work in progress or what, whatever. You know, so yeah. I don't know what's going to happen, but um, I think it's something that should be shared, just like this show, because I've never heard anybody talk about sociopaths ever. It's always on a movie, and it's a crazy guy that's going around, um, from what I remember, killing people, but they're not that stupid. That's more of a psychopath. But they're very intrinsic. They rarely, rarely get caught breaking the law, among everything else. Uh, but they got a smile on their face when they go around. They should be secret double agents. That's what they should be, because they would be perfect for that. I destroyed both countries. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, that's how they would be. Well, and I mean, if you think about it, that's exactly what they do on a smaller level. I know. that is Right. But the bigger the prize, the bigger the gratification. Yeah. Just like you said, I never dreamt in a million years somebody would take me down from the inside. Because I was too worried about the outside. You know, the people that yeah. competition and this and that and everything else. I wasn't worried about the people I was protecting and giving a job and providing for. I, I never thought that in a million years. You know, one thing I will say that is actually, in my opinion, a positive that comes out of those of us who go through those situations is we have far more empathy. Um, we also... We truly take care of those around us. Yep. We do whatever we have to do to make sure that those around us are protected and safe and happy mm -hmm. and healthy. Right. Yeah, I do too. And I can spot one after three times talking to them. But see, I'm not, I, when I meet somebody, I'm like, I don't go, hmm, I wonder if they're a sociopath. That's, that's not what I'm doing. You know, it, oh, it's, no. it's like, but then if I start hearing things that resonate with what I've heard in the behavior in the past from a sociopath, it's going to throw some red flags. And then I'm going to wait for oh, some yeah. time to go by. And I can guarantee you from that point, three or five more times being around this person, I can definitely tell you if they are or they are not. Oh, yeah. My, my kids definitely, by the time that they were teenagers knew that if mom said she got a weird feeling off of somebody mm -hmm. to watch them closely, if not go ahead and just get rid of them. Yeah. Your gut. Because it gut. never failed that yep. they would prove me right. Yeah. Right. I know. I, uh, my sister got, nobody knows who she is for the most part. She was dating this guy for four years and my sister's losing her business and she called me and she never calls me, but, uh, she goes, Oh, by the way, I don't want to say his name, but, my boyfriend broke up with me. And I'm like, you know what, Tammy? I never liked the fucking guy since the day I met him. Yeah. yeah. And and that's one of the worst parts is when you see somebody else going through it. You you can only say so much. Uh-huh. Without ending ending up ending your relationship with, with that, that person. person. Exactly. Right. Because they have to recognize it in order for them to actually take action. And until they actually fully recognize it, they're going to think you're off your rocker. You know what it's like? It's like if you have a very close couple friend and you um, find out by them telling you that they're fucking around on their spouse now, mm -hmm. what do you do? Do you shut your mouth or do you tell the other person? Either way, you're fucked. Because if they find out yeah. that you knew and you didn't tell them, you're an asshole. But then if you go do tell them, they're going to go, oh, no, what are you trying to do? You're trying to break up my marriage and blah, 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 blah. What, do you want my yeah. husband? Do you want my wife? You can't win. It's, a, it's that type of yeah. scenario. You can't win no matter what you do. Yeah, it's a no-win situation whenever you're presented with facts. And right. They're, and it's something that you already know they're not going to want to believe. So the best thing when you identify a sociopath, if you got that confirmed, is just walk away. Don't associate. Yeah. That's all, Because no one's going to believe you. I'll tell you a funny story about something like this. So I've known this girl 
since she was a baby, two, three years old, front of the family, daughter, whatever. Hell on wheels, redhead. I, I always tell her she's Satan's Satan's daughter, but she's got a good heart. <laughs> oh, yeah, just, oh, man, she's, and she's like, Timothy, blah, blah, and she'd fucking, run, eh. but really a great, you know, great heart, but don't fuck with her. She had an over-domineering father, which just hardened her right. even more, so they always got into yep. pissing matches. So that's the type of personality she is. So I told her the day you get married will be the end of the world. So one day she goes, I'm getting married. I said, oh, okay, it's the end of the world, but congratulations, whatever. So I met her fiancé. Right off the bat, my gaydar goes off. The guy's the guy's gay. There's some guy ten. There's some ah. gay tendencies into this. Okay, it's just it's like your gut. Some and some people have it. Some people don't. It's not a judgmental mm-hmm. thing. It's just this guy's gay. No, it's just recognition of yeah, of the energy that they put off. This guy's gay. Okay, or he's he's bi or whatever. But he definitely likes guys. But I didn't yeah. say anything. You know, fucking whatever. I, I, what do I know? I don't have any proof. That's just my gut feeling, okay? Well, um, she moved to Florida. She got divorced. Um, I reached out to her right when I started getting divorced, and she had no idea, and she was floored because she was good friends with my wife, and that's how she met her through me and blah, 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 blah. Couldn't believe it. And I said, <laughs> well, Josh and I are coming down to Florida. I want to see you. So I, So we drove down to Florida. And I, we met up with her, and she's real happy to see us. And just when we met her, we get into her car, and she goes, this isn't even five fucking minutes talking to her. Get in her car, and she goes, can you believe I caught my husband at the time with another man in bed? And I said, quite actually, yeah, I, nope. I do. She's like, <laughs> what? I'm like, I go, Stacy, I knew he was gay the moment I met him. And she goes, and you didn't say anything? I go, what the fuck am I supposed to say? My Chicago accent's coming up. Right. What the fuck am I supposed to say? I think the guy's gay, and I'm going to ruin the best day of your life because you're getting married to this guy? What the, what the fuck? Yeah. And she goes, she goes, next time you tell me. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I, I, I could, there ain't going to be a next time because she's so scorned by this thing. I, I'm, but I'm like, yeah, no problem. I'll tell you next time. But what was I supposed to My do? Son and I, yeah, I mean, what what are you supposed to do about that? It's like, how do you tell somebody, um, hey, I think the person that you're in a relationship with, I think they're batting for the wrong team there, dear. <laughs> you well, know? Could, could you could you imagine at the wedding, you know, the priest says where he says, you know, and it, if if somebody doesn't approve of this, for you know, speak now, forever, hold your peace, or whatever they say. Yeah. And I'm gonna stand up and go. Yeah. Uh, um, I, I I met the guy, and I think he's gay, and he's a homo, and I really don't think he should marry my friend. I mean, what are you supposed to say? Yeah, it's. I mean, <laughs> I mean, they would look at me like you are a complete fucking asshole. Right. Yeah, you know, it's like, you know what? Whatever. I didn't like my daughter marrying my son-in-law. I didn't like my son marrying his his wife, which is an ex-wife. What are you supposed to do? You know what? You know what my grandma told me whenever I was eighteen and introduced her to who would eventually be my first husband. Mm. Her comment was, "Why does my opinion matter?" You're the one that has to wake up with him every morning. Exactly. That's right. That's right. That's what I told my son. I go, he was all smiles on his wedding day. And I said, he kind of asked me what I thought. And I didn't want to tell him that he's marrying the wrong woman. All I told him was, this is what I'm going to say to you. You're marrying your mother. (laughs) And he goes, okay, I, I get that. I get that. I go, okay, because what am I going to say? No. The the kid was happier than I've ever seen him, and he just was witnessing the divorce between him and, and, and seeing his family destroyed. He wanted his own family. What am I going to say? Yeah. No, I don't think she's fucked up. Don't marry her. It ain't going to work out, which it didn't anyway. Uh, thank God for his, you know, he tried saving this girl, and it just, you know, he wanted his own family. He saw what his, his mom and dad did. 
I pulled up my wife. I helped her, whether she admits it or not. And he saw that, so he thought he could do it too, and it was a huge mistake. But but what am I going to say? Don't marry her? Oh, yeah, you, you can't say anything because, number one, you could be dead wrong. You know, well, that's they true. They could have ended up having a an incredible marriage that lasted until the day they died. Yeah. Well, but quite, yeah. at the same time, mm-hmm. you know, yes, you turn, it turned out you were right. <laughs> you know. Yeah, and I hate being right. But God, I hate being right. I, I know there's times I absolutely hate being oh. right all the time. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not right all the time, and I'm not. I know you're not saying that either, but I got a pretty good track. No, record. I was joking. I know I got a pretty good track record. So. Yeah, but if you think about it, they they always say that. Boys will marry somebody like their mother, uh-huh. and girls will marry somebody like their father. Right. Provided they've been around that person. Or they'll marry you know? their mother, you know, which my son did, pretty right. much. Not not to a T, right. but the same type of uh, personality. And actually, she looked right. like my ex-wife when she was younger, and my mom brought that up. She goes, she looks like... Oh, jeez. Uh, my mom brought it up, and I'm like, oh, my God. I go, you're right. She does look like him. When she was young, <laughs> younger, whatever. Like, oh my god! So hey, if you think about it, mm-hmm. that actually brings us back to the whole thing about when somebody is trying to overcome some kind of a trauma yep. in their life. Yep. That they will seek out somebody who, not consciously, but. Mm-hmm. Unconsciously, they will seek out somebody who has those qualities in order to have another chance to deal with it in a different way. Right. And hopefully beat it that time. Yep. But that's part of the reason that, that we have those repeating cycles. Whoa. Whoa, hang on a second. What did I do? Oh my god, hang on. Stop. Wow. I was clicking on one of our videos that have 25 views and it opened it and I didn't even realize it. Sorry. Fuck. Whoops. That yeah. That's funny. Welcome to live live shows. Oh yeah, if I, you know, we I'll, weird things happen. If I, if that's the worst thing I do, that'll be good, but yeah, I saw we had 25 views from yesterday's show, so I double-clicked on it and two likes, and I'm, I wanted to see who liked it, and it started playing the fucking thing, so I apologize for that one. <laughs> no worries. Weird. It happens. Whatever. <laughs> no, but you're right. They're, you're trying to substitute that, you know, and that's all you know, and blah, 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 blah. I, I, that, yeah. You're right on the money with that one. So. Yeah. Well, yeah, look at that. Do you think an hour and a half went, went by already? Well, yeah, I'm looking at the clock, too. <laughs> yeah, but it don't oh, feel like it. Go to work. I don't feel like yeah, I got. <laughs> I do got to get to work, but it don't feel like it to me. Well, it never does. But that's, that's crazy. We're fun while we're doing it. No matter what topics we talk about, we still have fun talking. Well, I think so. I think I hope other people do, and I wish they would call. I mean, they would. This would be. There's there's only a very few percentage of people that'll call, and and then they're worried about people might know, and it could be total anonymity, or they might feel like they're being judged, and that's the last thing that's going to happen here. Trust me on oh, that right? one. Um, you got to share this shit, man, because uh, you know I went through this and this whole sociopath thing. There's two pe- two types of people that have been that there are in this. There's the ones that have been a, have been have been through it. Fuck, I've been drinking. Have been through it, <laughs> and the ones that have not, and the ones right. that have not, just don't. You might as well be talking another language to them because they're just not gonna get it. But the right. people that have been through it, they'll put a smile on their face and they'll go, "Oh my god." And I'm like, I'm not the only one that's been through this. And you're not. No. And you and need... that's part of the reason we share is so that people know that they're not alone. Right. And that they aren't the ones that are crazy. 
and there's nothing wrong with talking about it. I mean, if you don't want to talk about it on the show, that's that's perfectly fine. I you know I I don't care. The the more that it gets out, and the more that I talk about it, it it's a type of therapy. It's not therapy, but it's a type. You know, it's a type of um, banding a brothers thing or whatever. It's a you know band of brothers or sisters or fucking whatever transgenders or joke there. But it, <laughs> it's like, listen, we're we're all people. We've been through this stuff, and people can resonate with you. And then you might actually help somebody that's going through this, and they don't understand right. what's going on. And that that honestly, when we have these kinds of discussions, that is my biggest hope. Is right. that we reach that that one person that is currently going through it and and now they they know they're not alone, you know, and I just want I want to put this out there that if any of our listeners are going through some kind of a trauma, please feel free to use our contact form and reach out to me. Those emails go go to me, and I will happily be an ear, a shoulder, and I will virtually hug you, you know, and I I will be a, a sounding board for you if um, if you have the courage to reach out to me, you know. Um, everybody needs to be able to talk about this stuff. And I would say. In addition to that, uh, and not be not in placement of. In addition to that, because that's really awesome that you're offering that. Um, get your ass to a fucking therapist. Oh please! I'm going to share don't something. Be well, not only don't be embarrassed, but make sure that they understand sociopathy. My mother has a master's in sociology, and I'm sitting here talking to her. I go, Ma, do you know what a sociopath is? Yes. Okay. Did you study them? No. A master in socio sociology. I'm like, ma, get a book, watch some YouTube videos like like the one I just played. I'm sure that educated people more than they ever knew about them or would want to know about them in in a ten minute freaking video off of YouTube. They're they're it, it it's. It's like you're dealing with an alien species. I don't know what to tell you, but you better find a therapist, and I would say a um, psychologist that has experience in dealing with sociopaths because they're not going to help you if they if they have no experience or knowledge of what these people people are capable of doing. Because when you're sharing your experience, there's not going to be any red flags if they don't know what they're talking about. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. I'll talk to my mom all day long, and it's like oh, da, 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 da. I feel like I'm talking to. And my mom's a very smart woman. Don't get me wrong; I'm not playing her down. Yeah. It's my mom, God damn it, you know. But yeah, but I just might as well be going blah 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 blah, blah, blah. and she, she's like uh 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 uh, and she, like, she doesn't get it. She doesn't get it, and yeah. she busted her ass to get her fucking so uh her masters, masters. She has a masters. So well, it doesn't it doesn't mean she can't still be blind to what's going on within her own world. Well, that's what I told her and my mom's been through hell and Al-Anon, and she wrote a book. So it's all public information to to help people and share her experience. She's been through hell and um my grandfather molested her and I thought he was the best guy on the fucking planet and he's lucky he's dead cuz I would have fucking killed him. So and and I don't mean that literally. I just mean that guy when I was a kid, was was the best person on the planet to me. And I would have knocked him on his ass. I wouldn't have killed him. So I'm just saying, I'm not, I mean, he's dead anyway. Yeah. Whatever, I'm not threatening anybody. But I'm just saying to the <laughs> severity um, that I would have definitely knocked him on his ass. So oh, yeah. my mom has been through hell. But I might as well just start talking refrigeration and air conditioning to her. When it comes to sociopaths, because she's she just doesn't get it. Well, and and unfortunately, it's you know, like I said, it's you can you can know all about something and be extremely intelligent, be very secure person, all that kind of stuff, 
and just not not be able to really quote unquote see what's going on within your own four walls. It it just it just dumbfounds me that somebody could have a master's in sociology and not even get on the subject and learn about social path, so, uh, whatever she well, called yeah. it. Yeah, that, Sociopathy. that's where my mind that they never went in depth into stuff like that. Because, I mean, even in my Sociology 101 course that I took, you know, the very beginning course we talked about it. Yeah, I don't get it. I, why do doctors get a medical degree and they don't know jack shit about nutrition? I don't get that either. <laughs> it's like wait a minute i gotta eat healthy to stay healthy but then when i'm not healthy i go to the doctor so i see you and you don't know jack shit about fucking nutrition what <laughs> yeah i'll just take this pill and call me in the morning okay thanks doc <laughs> <sighs> It's it's amazing. It is it really that way because we're that stupid, or is it really that way for a reason? Well, I mean, the medical industry is just that an industry. Yeah. Well, there you go. You know, it's it's no longer the Hippocratic Oath. It's it's how much money do I make off of these pills that you that I'm going to prescribe? Yeah, they actually don't take the hypocritical oath anymore, and, and that's. 20 years really I, no my um my uh what the hell was he my management 101 class at elgin community college in elgin illinois he was a former fbi agent and then he um uh he was in the medical field and then he was teaching at night and he shared that doctors no wait a minute that was my was that my pharmacology See, I'm confused because you're going back 25 years. One of my teachers said, <laughs> I think it was my pharmacology teacher because my management teacher, that doesn't make sense. Uh, pharmacology um, said that they don't even take, most of them don't take the hypocritical oath anymore. And that was over 20 years ago. Wow. Yep. I thought that was something that was just a given. Uh -uh. I didn't know they didn't do that uh, anymore. That's what he said. I can't confirm or deny it, but... That's, I'm trying to remember my pharmacology teacher. I remember my management teacher. One of them said it. I, it was either my management 101 or my pharmacology class. The pharmacology class would make more sense for medical. Um, yeah. But I don't, we might have been talking about ethics and it could have fall, fallen into management. I, I don't know. I don't remember. But, but yeah, it came out of one of their mouths. I can tell you that. <laughs> and I was shocked. Well, yeah, I mean, as you can tell, I'm I'm a little shocked at the moment yeah. because I that's just like they don't. I mean, you might want to do I, do some homework on it. I guess it. I won't be. Uh, yeah, I won't be yeah. saying what about that Hippocratic oath anymore. I would I would look into <laughs> it because um that was twenty plus years ago, probably twenty five, and it was prevalent back then. Wow. Yeah. That, that's like totally blowing my mind. Yeah, I still want to say it was my management class because it's something he would say. My pharmacology teacher didn't really put an impression on me. Can't even remember who it was. But I don't know. But one of them said it. I was like, whoa. <laughs> whoa. So. Okay, so although most do not swear to the original Hippocratic Oath, the majority of doctors do take an oath. It, but when so what? What medical school? I pledge to eat breakfast every morning. Right. What's the oath? <laughs> I pledge to. I pledge to sell, sell as many drugs. To big pharma. Yeah, they are exactly. We're on the same page. <laughs> I pledge to sell as many pills as I can to get my trip to Hawaii. What? Fucking whatever. <laughs> I will. Uh, I, I will send you this link via text so you can take a look at it. Just just for for your own info. Okay. Interesting. I'm I'm not going to read through it all right now, but it's it's kind of a long article. Yeah, you but. might be a little shocked because to see that that's kind of um, swaying it a little bit. You know, it's like do they or don't they? 
You know, don't give me a version of it's like the Constitution. You know, while it's kind of like the Constitution, fuck you. It's either the Constitution or it's not. It's either the hypocritical oath or it's not. Don't don't go in the gray area with it. Yeah. Because you're just rationalizing it, and that pisses me off. I'm not saying you. Just saying, that, that pisses me off when they start phrasing shit like that. Oh, it does me too. Yeah. Do they or don't they? That That's all I want to know. Very abstract. Yeah. Not, well, they used to, but, and, 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 and you're getting fucked now, and they really don't care about you, and you're going to die, but who cares? Hmm. No. no yeah. I don't want to worry about that. Whatever. <laughs> Fucking it's, uh, it's like it all stays here when I leave, but it's it comes out when I'm here and it stays here here for other people. They can they can look at that. I'm not here to tell you how to think or even inform you just or maybe inform you, but not, you know, not tell you what to do. You just figure it out yourself. So, so a quick quick note on the whole Hippocratic thing. Yeah. Apparently, the modern version was written in 1964 by Professor Lasagna. That wasn't long ago. That's when I was born. <laughs> Fuck. Wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Huh. And he he was at the School of Medicine at Tufts University. So it was created and abandoned, allegedly, in my lifetime. That's crazy. Fifty-five years, the and, the, one. and they were talking yeah. about it twenty-five years ago. So whatever that is, that when I was thirty, that's that's insane. Well, I mean, I would I would have been twenty-five. So yeah, yeah. thirty. Yeah, because I was going to school right about then, and I started my business at thirty-three. Yeah, that that's that's about right. Wow. <laughs> Fuck. Okay, whatever. All right. Well, that's some something for people to ponder, and then you too. You got a little bit of homework on top of all the other shit if you really want to look into it. I don't, I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. I mean, that's on them. But I don't go to the doctor unless I'm dying. So. Oh, you and me both. Yeah. Yep. So, there you go. So, all right. Well, I'm gonna let you go because that's an hour. It's almost two hours again. This is crazy. So. <laughs> We're going to have to start Does earlier. change our times for, to uh, 6 to 8? <laughs> well, no, because we're slow right now, so I can get away with this. But I I really got to have my ass yeah, on the road by 7. And I know you're kidding, but I'm just saying. If anything, it'll start at 5. <laughs> so I, I can't I can't oh. go to Yeah, right. Yeah, and I'm really not. I, I have a problem with 6 a.m., let alone 5. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I'm getting up at 5. So that means I'd have to get up at 4. To do this fucking show that I don't get paid for, and I pay, and I'm not complaining, and nobody calls in. So what the fuck, really? <laughs> and if we go even earlier, it'll be even worse. With yeah, calling. exactly. And why am I doing this? You know, whatever. <laughs> I don't care. Hey, if we help, well, we help one person. It's all worth it. So that's it. Oh yeah, that's that's how I look at life in general. If I if I make one person's life better throughout my lifetime, then my life was worth it. Yeah, I've had actually people, uh, it was my cousin, and then I'll definitely go, but he'd listen to me, and he's on a farm and, and everything else, and he was, um, fuck, I think he was like 350 pounds. And I called him on the phone, because he's my cousin and family, so just checking in once in a while. And uh, he goes, you know what, because of you, I, I'm under 300 pounds, and I've been working out. And I said, are you fucking kidding me? I go, he, I go you're giving me that credit? He goes, yeah, I am. I'm like, wow, I guess I guess I am doing some good things for people. And, but I don't know that. You know, I, I, nobody well, tells me. So. That's every day. If somebody makes a difference in your life, let them know it. Because just like you just said, you have no idea what effect you have. Right. And I always try to take the opportunity if somebody has, changed my mind or done something to change my perspective or mm -hmm. make my day better yep. I always try to thank you you know you saying that just totally did something for me well I might have saved the guy's life I mean I and it's not going to my head I don't, you know I, I 
he's family. He's my cousin. And just like anybody else, I hope they're healthy and, and happy and whatever. But he even admitted it, that it was starting to affect his health and his mobility and, and that. And he was just too fucking fat, you know? So he did something yeah. about it because of me talking about healthy stuff and working out and boxing and all the things I do, which depending on who's listening to it, oh, you're just showing off because, you know, you're in good shape and blah, blah, blah. So no, I'm that asshole. I, I, I'm doing and sharing things that work for me and they may work for you. Yeah. So it's to inspire you, not for me to look better than you or whatever. No. So it's like, no, you do things like that for break. yourself, not for anybody else. Yeah. Which, yeah. by the way, what? I'm seriously thinking, okay, so I have access to a couple of different exercise programs. Yeah. PX90 is the only one I recognize. P90X. On the yeah. list. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And I, I'm, I'm thinking about trying it. I know it'll kill me to start it. <laughs> yep. But I, because I can do it on my TV in my living room. And I don't have to actually go out in public and be around people. Right. Um, I, I'm seriously thinking about trying it and just just sticking with it and you know doing lower levels of what they what they show to get myself into it. All right. This is what I'll say. Um, P90X is an ass kicking. A uh, Tony Horton. I hate him, but I love him. I okay. Do too. Yeah. So if you understand <laughs> that, then because uh, every time I did it, I'd yell at the TV because he's a fucking asshole. Okay. But it's a very intense, very um, result oriented program. But I would start with P ninety X three. Okay. Because I've done all of them, and the one I like the most is the P ninety X three. Uh, it, because P ninety X is a, is an ass kicker. And then this is what happened to me. I did the yoga disc and I literally threw my back out, but my back, oh, crap. yeah, but my back is prone. If I do some weird things and apparently unbeknownst to me, some weird bends in yoga, I throw my back out and it put me in therapy with my chiropractor. That's how bad it was. Um, but I would do all the P90 X three and I would do it at your own pace. That's the one it is. I just I just pulled it up on my TV, yeah. and it's the the three. Yes, that is and a see, phenomenon. That's something having fibro. Um, mm. I have to be really careful about my movement with your nerves and stuff. Um. Well, Drinks. okay. One of the things about fibro uh-huh. is it's actually the connective tissues. All right. So ten, tendons issues. and ligaments and stuff. I I throw my joints out. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I have to be very careful about how I exercise, right. which is why I do free. Why I've always done free weights uh-huh. because I have more control over what I'm doing. Yeah. I, so I think, I'm, like I said, I'm I'm going to check it out. I think and see if I can handle it. P90X would be a uh, three would be great, and then when you're done with that, then you might want to move into free weights. I I wouldn't start with free weights. That's just me, um, because that's how I got yeah, back but, into it was through P90X three, and then I went into the weights. So. Well, see, I've always done free weights. Well, that's um, that's fine. High school. That's fine. I, it, it well, then it can be yeah. in addition to what you're doing, but regardless, well, I don't have them now. Well, I, I would that's what I th- okay. Well, that, can, and that requires being in public around people. Okay, so, so. you're you're me then, because that's what I did. I've been slinging weights since I was 15 years old. But I'm yeah. saying to get back into it, for sticking to the conversation in real time here, you're trying to get back into something. I would do P90X3, and then when you're done with that shit, then get back into the weights or start throwing weights in while you're getting back in shape for P90X. Because let me tell you something. At this age, if you just go right back into weights, you might hurt something. Oh, I, I know how to do it properly. Working I do to too, but I, did, I tore my bicep yeah. off my fucking shoulder. I know how well, to work yeah. out too. And I don't think that's an age thing. Because I've heard 20, 30-year-olds ripping their biceps right out, their bones off their muscles. So I don't know what it is, but it happens to everybody. But that kind of made me a little bit more cautious in what I'm doing. So, Yeah, I have my little lightweights um, here at the house. So once I'm, once Uh to get through the whole video or program, then I'll add the, you know, my little lightweights. I'll tell you this too. I was never a band. 
bands, workout bands fan until I did P90X3. And I have one hanging on my door I'm looking at right now, and I, I do an ab exercise that is so productive just with those bands. So don't underestimate bands. Oh, I don't. I have uh, two sets of them. Okay, there you go. Yeah, see, you're better than I am because I'm like, ah, eh, fuck those things. And they're great. Bands are great. So. Yeah, it's the it's the resistance. Right. You got the constant resistance on and there. Yeah, I, with my, my physical issues, I found that bands mm-hmm. were less um, less impact or stress on my body. Right. Well, maybe we'll do a workout segment, and I'll be Arnold the whole time. He's just a big fucking loser, asshole. Hello. She's gone. Why does she always hang up at the end of the show when it's not over? But, yeah, we're going to do that workout thing now. Asshole. Asshole. I'll be back. You know, it sounds different <laughs> in the headphones than when I do it without a mic coming back into my headphones. Because it doesn't sound the same, but, no, well, maybe it is. Oh, whatever. But, yeah, I would do workout and things like that. It uh, just kick your ass. Asshole. Asshole. All right. She going to call back or not? If not, I'm ending the show. Hmm. All right, I'm ending the show. All right, so thanks for listening to me. And um, I don't know. That's a lot of things. I don't really want to rehash the sociopath thing, but uh, it came up yesterday, and then... Uh, I just think people should have the knowledge or awareness and you can do what you want with it. Me personally, I went through it. I'll never go through it again. God damn it. Hello. Hey. <laughs> you always hang up right Not before sure. the end of the show. Pardon? You always hang up right before the end of the show. I don't know what happened. I, know, I just totally lost you and your video is buffering yeah big shocker it's been doing that from the beginning i don't know i think i think this time it was your fault not mine though well because i'm not on that phone today it's a (laughs) yeah you just dropped out i didn't touch nothing that's weird i don't know weird but anyway anyway well maybe you gotta go to work anyway yeah i do too and we'll talk about (laughs) we'll talk about exercise and all that stuff too and i want to get somebody on i had my boxing instructor on here and she's uh She's got certification and everything. Maybe I'll get her back on. But I, I love talking about that stuff, okay. too. Okay. I got to say, I think it's awesome you have a female boxing instructor. That is so freaking awesome. Oh, she's a, <laughs> she uh, she's like five foot tall, but she's a, she's a badass. I mean, she's... Awesome. And she's little. Well, the the reality <laughs> of all of it is is that there's only me and another guy, and the, and the rest of them are women. I, th- I was wondering if the the videos you showed were like of the actual people that that are in your gym. They are. That is so cool. Yeah. No, it's great. And there's not a lot of there's not a lot of uh it's kind of like um uh body pump and boxing combined. And there's not really a lot of gyms that are doing that to my knowledge or at least not in Loveland, Colorado. She's the only one that's doing it like that. And um yeah, I mean, I've learned so that much. That is so awesome, though. Yeah, I've learned so much, I can't even tell you. It's so much so that I want to get certified to, to be involved in it. So. Yeah, that, it's great. that is freaking awesome. And I love the fact, because it's so empowering for women. Right. And so to hear that, number one, the teacher is a woman, mm-hmm. and that most of the class is a woman, as it's female. Right. It's just, I love it. <laughs> Yeah, she's uh she's something else. She's a firecracker and she started her own business last August, so she's I mean, August is gonna be here before you know it, and that'll be her year anniversary being in business. But um yeah, very knowledgeable, very inspiring, um, just really good. And you're right, it brings up the confidence of women because there's some women now in there that I wouldn't want to get hit by. <laughs> I'm serious. Some of their that just totally brought back a memory. <laughs> some uh, some of the right hooks I wouldn't want anybody to get hit by. Right. Yeah. Uh, right. So back when I left my first husband, mm-hmm. um, my the apartment complex I moved into had a little gym in it. Yep. 
and he wanted to come over and talk about our divorce. And I'm like, that's fine, but I'm on a schedule and I got to work out while we talk. And so he came over and at the end of it, I will never forget the look on his face. He's like, man, I ain't ever messing with you again. Smart man. <laughs> yep. Yeah, women can be badasses, man. I don't care. If you get into boxing, but but women's, in my opinion, women's true weapons are their legs. If you can learn oh, yeah. how to kick, you got such an extension on a guy. And if you just start out boxing and they think that you're going to box them and you just hit them with a roundhouse or a kick to, side kick to the head, it, it's it, it's over, man. I mean, it's like, oh yeah, yeah. I would like to see that incorporated into what we do. And I I I have some martial arts. I don't have black belts, but I have experience in belts in different arts and forms. And I would I would like to get back into that just for me. Because man, I'll tell you what: when you get limber and you you bring that leg around to kick somebody, you're gonna hurt them. Oh, <laughs> really, heck yeah. Ba- yeah, really bad. So, oh yeah, yeah. But women don't have upper body strength, but legs. I think women, for the most part, have stronger legs than men do. So, I I would tend to agree with you. Um, back when I was, you know, going to a gym mm-hmm. and doing the free weights and all that stuff. Of course, they had the leg machines, and um, and one of my my favorite one was the one where you lay on your back mm-hmm. and you you press up. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was always amazed at the amount of weight that I could actually do on that. Yep. Yeah, women have have great leg strength. <laughs> they do. So. <laughs> oh, that could go to a bad place. I I understand. I I know. I don't want to go down that road, but <laughs> they they do. I mean, just probably not much less than men. So. <laughs> But and most of them want to work on their butt and all that shit anyway. So there you go. It's all good. So. Yep. But all right. Well, we can talk about that tomorrow. I'll talk to Anna tonight and see if she wants to come back on here and uh, she's gonna go. Oh, that would be so cool. What time do I have to get out of you, fucking crazy? That's what she's gonna say. (laughs) (laughs) No, she's great. And and if she did say that, it wouldn't surprise me, but she wouldn't. But that's how she is. You know, she she just tells it like it is. That's why I get along with her so yeah. well, so well. But or or if there's no spot open, we can shove it in, you know, one evening. I don't know. Whatever we gotta do. Oh so. yeah. Well, I mean, in all in all reality, I mean we can you know, as long as the schedule allows for it. Right. We can do shows whenever we want. So well, we'll Just look at know. we'll look at time slots because she's going to ask, well, when, and I'm going to go, well, let me fi- find out when, and because uh, I know she isn't going to want it. Actually, she bo- she teaches boxing now, quite honestly, so she can't do it. So it's going to have to be at night. So okay, we'll figure something we can, out. We can work something out. Yeah, we'll figure something out. I'll bring it up to her again because last time I interviewed you, it was um, it was just her and I on my podcast, but this will be different now because you'll be there and. Yeah, and it it'll just be better for sure. So, oh, I think it'll be awesome. Yep, I'm you, anxious to start having guests on here. I would well, and I was gonna say you sound motivated and excited to talk to her. So, I mean, you two it probably just turn into a fucking chick conversation, and I'll just be like, right, uh-huh. we'll just ignore you. <laughs> Are you still there, Tim? <laughs> yeah. Huh? What? <laughs> so just sit in your corner and behave. No, that'll be great. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes, dear. Shut up, Tim. Yes, dude. You guys can talk about your shit, and then uh, if you're getting into it, and other women are thinking about it, then that's great. That's perfect. So, yeah, I would, I would love to have her on the show, and hopefully drive some women out there in the Denver area over to her. Well, get them them started, get them involved. Well, she needs it, and it's worth the drive. Trust me, and uh, it's right off 287 and South Side of Loveland, and well, Third Third Avenue in Loveland, but. It, it it would be definitely worth it. So she'd appreciate that too. So it'll be good for everybody. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll see you in the morning. So I really got to get the fuck out of here. I can't believe that's been <laughs> over two hours. So. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, you have a great day. You too. All right. Thanks, Melissa. Bye. Bye. 
Oh, I cut her off a little bit. All right, so I got to go. I really got to go. I got to go to work. Share the show. Yeah, I'll get on on here and uh, bring her in. That'll be in. Uh, she'll be officially our first guest, I guess. I don't know. Uh, and we'll go from there. So I'm just trying to make you think, think different, figure things out, and try to protect yourself from all the all the evil in the world. <laughs> You have been listening to the original Red Pill Show.